what most Christians believe today is because of battles that were won, not only between uh, nations and empires, but between fellow so-called Christians of the time and churches of the time who battled each other to the death in, in many circumstances. And let me show you here an excerpt from this book. So was Jesus a man bearing God or a God bearing man? Between those extreme poles lay any number of other answers which competed furiously through the first Christian centuries. By 400, the year 400 AD, most Christians agreed that Jesus was in some sense divine and that he had both a human nature and a divine nature. But that belief allowed for a wide variety of interpretations. And if events had developed differently, if great councils had decided other than they actually did, any one of these various approaches might have established itself as orthodoxy. In the context of the time, cultural and political pressures were pushing strongly toward the idea of Christ as God. Cultural and political pressures. So that only with real difficulty could the memory of the human Jesus be maintained. Historically, it is very remarkable that mainstream orthodoxy came out so strongly in favor of asserting Christ's full humanity. When most modern churches explain their understanding of Christ's identity, their Christology, they turn to a common body of ready-made interpretations. An ancient collection of texts laid down in the 5th century at a great council held in 451 at Chalcedon. The church formulated the statement that eventually became the official theology of the Roman Empire. This acknowledges Christ in two natures which joined together in one person. Two natures existed without confusion, change, division, separation, the distinction of natures being in no way annulled by the union, but rather the characteristics of each nature being preserved and coming together to form one person. That's what these people decided. Some historians observe that they believe that they were guided by the Holy Spirit towards these council decisions of the time. And lastly, let me show you what historian Jenkins says about the bloody battles. Horror stories about Christian violence abound in other eras with the Crusades Inquisition as prime exhibits. But the intra-Christian violence of the 5th and 6th century debates was on a far larger and more systematic scale than anything produced by the Inquisition and occurred at a much earlier stage of church history. And then uh, historian Jenkins quotes the famous uh, book by Edward Gibbon, Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire, who reports countless examples of Christian violence and fanaticism. And then he gives an account from Gibbon's book. Jerusalem was occupied by an army of monophysites. These monks, in the name of the one incarnate nature, they pillaged. They burned, murder, the sepulcher or the grave of Christ was defiled with blood. On the third day before the festival of Easter, the Alexandrian patriarch was besieged in the cathedral, murdered in the baptistry. The remains of his mangled corpse were delivered to the flames and his ashes to the wind. And the deed was inspired by the vision of a pretended angel. This deadly superstition was inflamed on either side by the principle and practice of retaliation. In the pursuit of a metaphysical quarrel, thousands were slain. I mean, this is awful stuff. This is stuff that should embarrass so-called Christians everywhere. I'm embarrassed by this because these people call themselves Christians. Although I obviously don't share those uh, views that become known as Trinitarianism. So please check this book out excellent book jesus wars by philip jenkins and it's all political folks if you're a christian you are most likely following a political belief in other words beliefs that were set by politicians these people were politicians they were part of the then roman empire political religious system think about that you're not following matthew's account Luke's account of who Jesus was and is. You're not following Paul's account, like that section of Romans chapter 5, of who 
Jesus truly is and was. No, you're following a political religious system that is established on the bodies and the bloodshed of many, many people who unfortunately on both sides call themselves Christians. It's, it's quite amazing.